Welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. And I started to say good afternoon, but then I realized that if you're in California, it's morning. And if you're in Spain, it's uh, late into the evening. So as Josh said, I'll be the MC for these lightning talks. And my job is to keep things moving and make sure that we get to hear from all of our wonderful presenters. If you attended the earlier lightning talk, then you know you're in for a great time. Lightning talks are a great way. They're quick, they're high intensity uh, to learn a lot about Sakai in a very short time. And I think you'll find them very engaging. And I'll, uh, frankly, I'll encourage you to type questions in the chat so that we can uh, feed them to our presenters. Uh, we'll slip them in as, as we have time. Uh, meanwhile, I also want to encourage everyone to just continue building the community. Uh, take note of the presenters. If you're interested in something that they're talking about, follow through with them, either through the Sakai Virtual Conference site in Sakai or af offline afterwards. Yeah, there you go, Soji. <laughs> Soji says it's 2.30 a.m. in Japan. That's right. There you go. <laughs> we are truly global. So um, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to call on each presenter in the order that they appear in, in the agenda that's on the screen. Thank you, Wilma, for building those beautiful slides. Um, when it's your turn, you, you can take the presenter controls and either display your slideshow or share your screen, whatever's appropriate. And you'll have nine minutes uh, for both your presentation and for the Q&A. So I'll, I'll send you a message when we're getting short on time. And we're going to start off with uh, my dear friend, but no relation, Derek Ramsey, uh, who works for Longsight. And if you are a Longsight uh, subscriber, then you know that Derek is the man who answers all your questions. And so I, it's very clever. He's going to talk about, so what are the most uh, frequently asked questions that, that he gets? You know, what stumps him? Not stumps him. He doesn't get stumped. But um, I'll let you take it away, Derek. It's, it's yours. We are seeing your slideshow, but not hearing your voice. All right. Let me now uh, we hear your voice, but don't hear the go. slideshow. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let me see here. All right. There we go. Edition from the beginning. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, Welcome everyone, and uh, thank you again, Martin. Um, so we're just gonna go over some frequently asked questions uh, that I see from our clients uh, via either a tickets uh, email or some monthly calls. Um, one of the first um, items that I wanted to discuss, so most of our clients, multi-node tenants, um, they have numerous Sakai nodes. So sometimes they'll receive a trouble ticket uh, from a user and um, as they're troubleshooting, um, they may have a hard time uh, replicating an issue. So it's nice to be able to connect to the exact node that that user is on uh, when they're experiencing trouble. Maybe it's a node specific problem. So um, what you're looking at here is um, at the very bottom of your Sakai, and so you have the small um, information icon there. If you select that, you have a few pieces of information. You have the Derek, server time. I think you're, you're not showing the actual slideshow. We're seeing like the PowerPoint editing. Uh -huh. All right, let's see if we can get that swapped over here. Well, we're seeing the, the change node slide for a second, but it is still in the edit view. Sorry, I just didn't want you to get too far. Not Good. It's 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 trying to share in my other screen for some reason. Well, we're seeing the correct slide now. Anyway. Okay. All right. We're we'll leave it like this for now. We'll just leave it here. Slide. If you guys can see it, we'll leave it here. Um, if if you notice an issue, uh, let me know again, Wilma. Thank you. Um, so as you can see here, um, in this screenshot, the uh, node 08 is uh, displayed, um, and so. Um, what you want to do is to connect to a different node um, is you need to get to your dev tools. Um, your browser, um, you may be able to go to your settings to get to dev tools. I think Windows shortcut key, I think maybe F12 will launch it. Once you get dev tools um, up, you'll notice along the top row here. So this is Firefox. All your browsers are a little bit different, but you're looking to get into your cookies area. So in Firefox, you're looking for your application tab. And from there, you see um, on the left-hand side, I navigated to cookies and name, Sakai ID, and you got your value. If you look there at the end, you see 08. So that corresponds to the node that we saw when um, we were at the information um, or icon. So all you need to do is edit that value, change that last um, 
value there, the 08, to what node do you want to connect to? So you see here, I'm changing it from 08 to 04. Okay. Um, once you change that, you need to refresh your browser. When you refresh your browser, you are going to be prompted to log in again. Okay. Um, once you log back in, and scroll down to the information icon, you will see that you are now on the server that you changed to. Um, so like I said, very beneficial for when it comes to uh, troubleshooting issues. If you can't replicate and you need to get on that specific node um, to continue working. Um, next, uh, Sakai events. So um, something that a lot of admins are gonna do is get tickets um, where there are questions around what a specific user has done around a, uh, a time period. Um, and you're gonna pull event history right to be able to go through and track what that user done within that time. Um, and uh, a lot of the user um, event history, the, the events themselves, some are self-explanatory. Some of them you're going to sit there and scratch your head on a little bit, and it's not 100% clear what that is. Um, last year, I think, Kenny, or earlier this year, myself, Kenny, Wilma, we went together out in the community. There was already a, a Confluence page that had a lot of these in it, but some were missing. We found other pages out in the community that had a handful of events, and we tried to combine them and update this uh, new Confluence page uh, to include all of those. So you'll see here, um, we got a lot of them listed, like here, for example, the to-do list. Um, it is, I'm sorry, um, the test and quizzes, the to-do. So there's some of them that we haven't got around to. I think the majority of them you're gonna find lives in this document. Um, if you come across an event that's missing, feel free to shoot an email over. Uh, we will look into it and get that event um, added. Um, and if it's missing a description or it's to do and you have questions, let us know. We'll go in and do some research and try. Um, there's a link here at the top. I know it's a very long link. It's not very helpful here. I did upload this PowerPoint presentation. Wilma had, I think, sent out a link um, or the link may be found in uh, the lessons page. So for the conference homepage, I think on each page there is a slide area um, for presentation. Click on that. My presentation will be there along with all the others that are available, and you can grab this link here. There's another link later you may need as well. So a good link to have bookmarked. Um, admin site perms tool. This is a tool that a lot of our clients use from time to time. Um, you know, as, as, as upgrades happen, maintenance releases, sometimes there's new permissions added that are required. Um, there's also a time where um, a client may just change their mind on a, a role permission set, and they want to change the way that that role works in their Sakai instance. Um, in the past, uh, Longsight just had some SQL, right? We would run a query and update those permissions for the clients. Um, a handful of years ago, admin site perms became available and it's a very user-friendly tool in the UI uh, to update permission sets. So you see you have some uh, site types at the top. So you'd either choose course project, all your site roles, um, this is the uh, the generic site roles. Your instance would be different because I'm sure that a lot of the clients have um, roles that they have created um, manually uh, to match their instance. So you may have a longer list of site roles and on the right, a long permission set. Um, at the top, you'll notice add, remove permission. So you just select the uh, information you need and then add or remove based on what you're updating and after you do that, you'll see this blue box appear at the top. So it's gonna tell you exactly what you're changing. So you can see from this screen here, I am adding rubrics manager view for all course sites for the role instructor, 0% complete. If you kick this job off, I like to keep um, your session active, refresh it from time to time. You'll watch it update. So you can watch your percent completed update. Uh, if you're a smaller client, this job may finish uh, pretty quickly. A large client with, uh, you know, tens and thousands of sites, uh, you know, this job may take a couple hours to complete, depending on what you're updating. Uh, once it does complete, you'll notice that it will say 100% complete, and it will actually, I think it'll give you a listing of actually how many sites um, was updated during that process. Um, so it's a quick up down admin site perms. Oh, um, academic 
I'm sorry, uh, the, the term manager. Um, we have clients from time to time. Uh, you know, every semester a new term needs to be created. Uh, worksite setup, you have the drop down area. Um, and so new terms get added there. It allows them to help search for sites and it allows um, for like uh, manual course creation um, to allow to be able to create a course for that specific term. Um, a lot of our clients will send over tickets and I will get it created manually for them mainly in the database. Um, but this term manager tool also lives within administration workspace. So uh, as an admin, you can go in, you'll see some information at the bottom here um, on the uh, in the slides. You have the title, you have the start date and end date. Um, that is extremely important if you have your instance configured to automatically publish um, and unpublished sites uh, because it's going to look at those dates and depending on how the job is set up and job schedule for publish and unpublish, that would determine when that specific term uh, sites will be um, published um, or unpublished. Um, the current, the bottom checkbox, um, it's the last row there in the column. That's for if you want it to display right now in, in work site setup or not. Um, let's see, delegated access. Um, so uh, a lot of our clients take advantage of de delegated access, uh, a great tool to um, kind of have like department admins, users who can only access certain sites in your instance. Um, um, the, the thing I wanted to note about delegated access, the question that we get from time to time is, uh, hey, I added um, a new term in our Sakai instance today. The sites are there. The rosters are there. It looks great. I go in the delegated access tool and the sites are not there. Um, can you add them? Uh, the, way, the way the delegated access tool works is um, the job usually runs once a day for most of our clients. So you see it here, cron expression. It runs 3 a.m. daily. Um, this job needs to run to add those courses to the hierarchy every day. So if those sites got added at 8 a.m., um, well, this job runs at 3 a.m. So the sites will not be in your hierarchy until the next time the job runs. And so usually they're, they're there the next day, right? So you just need to wait until that job runs or come in here to the, the trigger um, in the um, job schedule and kick it off for it to run. Once that job completes, uh, you'll notice the hierarchy is updated. Once again, the time that this job takes to complete is based around how much uh, data is going to be populated in your instance. Uh, for yeah, a normal, normal, normal semester. Your time ahead. is up, sir. My time is up. That's yeah. good. Only had one more slide. Um, if uh, anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Like I said, the, uh, all this is available in the uh, slides um, up on that uh, work site that Wilma, that site that Wilma put up. I really appreciate that. That that was really, really valuable. You know, like, oh, I didn't know that. That's really helpful. So thank you, Derek. I appreciate thank you it. All. all right. We're going to move on quickly here. 